In the constantly changing world of fundability, the big question is this. How are entrepreneurs and real estate investors like us, ones who want to grow our businesses and who are tired of paying for really expensive alternative lending, how do we tap into the most inexpensive money available and do it without the hassle of typical borrowing? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. Welcome to the Get Fundable Podcast with your host, Merrill Chandler. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Get Fundable Podcast. I am Merrill Chandler, your host, and today it's finally here. I've been working on this, uh, and I've been using bits and pieces of this metaphor for literally a decade, and today is the day. So when we come back, we're going to start talking, we're going to be comparing building business banking relationships to personal uh, love, uh, love and romantic relationships. So here it is. We'll be, so we'll see you in just a second. All right. Welcome back. Merrill Chandler here, your, <laughs> your host of the Get Fundable podcast. Now, uh, I have been, uh, like I said in the intro, I have been using this metaphor for, literally for years and years. And, and it's finally come to me. I've used it so many times that you guys need to hear it start to finish. And, and everything inclusive. We're going to be talking about how building a relation, a personal relationship, like a romantic relationship, how it is part and parcel, how it is identical in every way to building a business banking relationship that's going to deliver you hundreds of thousands or millions in business lines of credit. So <laughs> let's get started. First of all, there, there are six areas right? Five, five areas, but one's kind of a, 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 a give and receive. So there's checking them out, right? Curiosity each way. You're creating interest, they're creating interest, but there's the checking out process. Then we go to the, uh, the, the, the dating section. Then a, a part of our relationships, both personally and uh, with our businesses. Then we go into courting. Courting is not dating. But courting is not a, a, a engagement, which is the fourth area, engagement. And then there's the committed relationship. Uh, I say committed relationship uh, in honor of folks who aren't able to get married yet um, and, uh, and seal it. But it is a long-term committed relationship. All right. So let's go through. I'm going uh, 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 to let's go through each one of these and see what you think. See, <laughs> I freaking love, I love this metaphor. So first things first, number one, they're trying to create, in, ba- lenders try to create interest in you by mailing you offers. Now in my boot camp, in the book, we talk about never respond to offers, but what they're doing is you are interesting enough. Usually it's because of your income. It isn't necessarily because of your credit score, because people, uh, people have, you know, 580 credit scores and still may get offers, but there, 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 there is enough interesting about you to open up a dialogue, right? Just like you're at the coffee shop, somebody finds you interesting and, and she approaches you and says, hey, I, I, I like the book you're reading, right? There's enough interest to start a conversation, start a dialogue, start to create, uh, to, to see if there's actually anything here. That's, so that's the curiosity stage, right? Huh. Who is this uh, lovely person? Who is this dashing gentleman? And who is this borrower? Who is this lender? Now, the way we uh, the, the the way we uh, demonstrate interest is by wanting to uh, wa- wanting to achieve a goal, right? Um, it may be get buying a home. It may be getting a car. It may be even a, a credit card. But we express interest in what we're looking at. Uh, uh, they, they make us offers, but they also make very attractive offers inside of the, um, uh, let's say, their websites, right? If you Google, hey, what's a great Miles credit card? And you're going to get dozens of, of mentions. 
the way they speak, the language, the offer, the rebates, the points, all of those things are how they create interest in you. So that's the offer. Now, we also create, uh, we also, um, sh they show interest in us, but very interesting, they show interest in us by doing like a, um, like a, uh, a, a, uh, a soft pull right? A promotional inquiry on your credit report. They're now pinging you. They're checking you out. They're saying, huh, who is this person? Um, because they look really interesting to me and they'll do what's called a promotional ping. They're, they can do a soft, also known as a soft inquiry, right? But a soft inquiry doesn't doesn't harm you. It doesn't even tell you <laughs> that they're checking you out, that the lender is checking you out. Just like somebody watching you play volleyball and they're like, wow, he's awesome. She's a spectacular player. She's cute. Hey, that guy is, is so a fit, right? Whatever it is that <laughs> we're looking for, but they don't even know we're being checked out. So you, they don't know that you're checking out the banks by looking at their offers and you don't, uh, and you don't know that they're checking you out by doing soft polls, promotional inquiries, et cetera. Now, one of the reasons why, um, and now I get to cover it in, in more detail. One of the reasons why I tell people not to respond to the offer don't put in the promotion code. Don't respond to any offers that you see because all of a sudden you're telling them, hey, I think you're great. Come on over, right? And that creates, as, as we have, most of us, all of us have learned over our relationship uh, cycles is that anybody who is too, <laughs> excuse me, who, anybody who's too interested becomes un, uh, un our, curios, our curiosity drops, right? Somebody's too interested, then all of a sudden it's like, nah, I, yeah, I don't know. Fine, I'll go to coffee, right? But it, there's not the excitement. There's not the tease. There's not the inquiry. That's why I say when somebody, when a bank sends you an offer, a lender sends you an offer, don't respond there. Go to the bank and say, hey, what do you got? Knowing you're already checking it out, okay? So this, so those offers is all about the tease. You're you're looking to create interest right now, but notice what we do. Let's go back to that volleyball in the park idea. Well, we're fit. We've been playing volleyball. We're we're looking for uh, for someone that that would be interesting to us to share our time and and energy with, and so we have gone through the work to put ourselves in shape right? Whatever shape looks like to you financially, we want ourselves to be in shape. But that does not mean an 800 plus credit score. Being in financial shape is going through what we discussed in the boot camp. No, no bounces, right? Having a new zero, impressing lenders, both current lenders and future lenders. You, you're in financial shape um, so that when somebody looks at you, they're like, damn, Whoa, gorgeous. I like them, right? On the surface, they look awesome. And they fit my criteria. Well, notice personally and, and our business banking relationships have the exact same dynamic, right? When they check you out, you're putting, you want to, you want to demonstrate that you are awesome. And that is a an amazing borrower profile. So when they do that soft pull, they're like, hey, this is pretty interesting. This woman is amazing on paper, on paper. Well, we're doing the same thing when we're checking them out. We're looking at their websites for the credit instruments or otherwise. We're like, whoa, this is awesome. They're, they got 80,000 miles on Southwest Chase Card for the business, right? Now it's 70, but whoa, that's awesome. On its face, I'm totally in to this bank's offer, just like your volleyball players would be or somebody sitting at the coffee shop. So one, then it's making contact. Now, every one of us 
every one of us put our best foot forward, right? So how do we make content? How do we go from the, the curiosity, the checking out stage, right? The, the checking them out, them checking us out. The way we begin the dating process is they do a hard inquiry, right? They do a hard inquiry. So think of a hard inquiry if you're uh, into online dating. You have a profile in an online dating. That's your borrower profile. But in that borrower profile, lender, if you're an online dating, um, it, I, we could even talk about Tinder, right? You swipe left or swipe right, and you look at Tinder, and there's other, uh, other dating sites that use this. You swipe right because they fit that initial curiosity that you have for a partner, business partner, uh, or, or a personal partner. So uh, a business banking partner. So, but when you but when you they dive a little deeper, they're going to check out your profile. Lenders look at your borrower profile, but they're not just looking for that score. They're like, you know, your score is like your attractiveness quotient, right? Oh, hey, he's an easily an eight, right? So. She is, oh my, oh my word, she's gorgeous. That's your, that's your initial score, but score has no depth. As we've learned in the book, in my boot camp, in the, in the Momentum Mastermind, score has no depth. The borrower profile is what has the depth. So your, your, your personal dating model, they're going in and they're checking out all of your, all of your details. The things that you have produced about yourself. Good news is that in the banking world, in the lender borrower relationship, they, you can't lie. It is the truth. They get to see your borrower behaviors. So think of it this way, right? You are your borrower profile. When they're checking out your profile, you're showing them your your priorities. You're showing them your likes and dislikes. Now, the equivalent of going to it like Facebook, and they see your profile. Uh, your 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 in the personal world, they you look at the profile, and and, and check out your LinkedIn profile. Um, everybody calls it uh, you know, hey, I stalked this I stalked this guy um, because uh, I I want to ask him out. We work together, right? So they Facebook stock and they in a LinkedIn stock and then they a Tinder stock, whatever the platforms that, that, that they're using. What's the, difference between, what's the difference between that and I stalked them on the lenders, stalking you on uh, Experian, stalking you on TransUnion, stalking you on LexisNexis, stalking you on, they're checking you out in every way. All right, and you're showing them who you are. Now we call it in the boot camp. We in our universe we call that the uh, the your borrower behaviors, right? Your borrower profile. But you're showing your traits, your tastes, and your borrows by, and your behaviors financially, right? So so think of it personally as someone looks at your Facebook page or your and and it's like oh that they're in a Netflix binger and they have 50 top videos. Well and they have no activities outside. Well, that's gonna tell an outdoors enthusiast, like, yeah, they're super cute, uh, I'm super interested at the shallow level, but I'm, I don't like watching TV that much. And so they start going to the gym, they start looking at who you are, right, personally, Anybody in the, in the 21st century, anybody is checking you out on all the available platforms before they even may even ask you out. They don't want to waste their time going any kind of connection or depth until you are interesting to them. And once they're interesting, once they're interested, then it moves into dating. So the, the way we ask each other out is you submit an application to one of the offers uh, the, uh, or uh, to one of the, the credit cards that you've seen or uh, otherwise. Let's start with credit cards. We'll move in a deepening relationship with the other credit instruments. So you, you get a credit card. Now you're not responding and not to the, the, the mail offer or the online offer and clicking a button and putting in a promo code. You're not doing that but you do like what they're offering. Yeah, I love that Chase Southwest card or that Chase United card. I, I'm all in with those things on the business side. So, um, so you begin an electronic relationship. 
All right. <laughs> and this, uh, this electronic relationship is the soft pull initially for that. Hey, is, how do they, how do they, how, what, what's my sense of them? And then it goes into a hard pull. And that hard pull is, I want to know everything I can about you, says the lender to the borrower. Just like that hard pull is the first date. And that first date uh, is where the lender and you meet, they review your profile and, 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 and say, you know what? I want to start something with you. And starting something with dating with you, let's say that the credit card is dating. So you go to, I'm just gonna use Chase because I'm familiar with, uh, recently I've, I've, I've gotten all, a whole bunch of instruments from them. So I'll just use Chase as an example. So Chase does a hard pull and, they, the, and, I, and uh, my application is, I put in all the, good, uh, all the goods inside my application. They review my application and, and they're like, huh, I like you. Yeah, let's go out. I'm going to give you a credit card. Now, how much they like you is whether that's a $500 secured credit card or a $25,000 unsecured credit card. And they're going to base that on how solid your profile is, right? So, let, let, so let's go at, at what that means for in the dating and moving into, um, at moving into courting, right? You get, you get more serious. They, when they review your profile, they're going back 24 months and they wanna see how good are your current relationships, right? Are, are there any diatribes on Facebook where you're just going off on your uh, on a current partner or your ex, right? Are they? Uh, are you? Do you have similar values, similar goals, right? This is the the dating moving into courting, right? You're like, I've already I, I've already said you can have. I'm going to test you out. I'm going to trust you with my love says the says the man or the woman to the, the person who's seeking their attention the, the lenders are saying i'm going to test you i'm going to give you a little love and i just want to see what you do with it i want to i want to know that i can trust you how is that not exactly like our personal relationships we're like we're stepping on a, a th thin ice right we're like ah uh, do i oh yeah, I like them. Yeah, I, what about this? What about this? I'm going to test it out. I'm going to see, I'm going to take them home to meet my parents, right? How do they do? Let's go hang out with his brothers and sisters. Let's go hang out with his or her friends. And all of a sudden, you're now integrating your lives together as you go through this dating process, as you move towards courting, you're looking, you're asking the questions because the presumption here is we're, each party is looking for a long-term relationship. Lenders are looking for a long-term relationship, a lifetime relationship. You're looking for a lifetime relationship. So let's, let's move that, the metaphor through those stages. So, do you have similar values and similar goals? Do you have each other's back while you're courting, right? Did you stick up for your, uh, for your beloved while they were uh, in a fight with a friend? Did you stick up for your, th this partner? Um, the lenders want to know how you showed up for your previous partner, lending partners. They want to know, and that's all on your profile, right? Your buyer behaviors. But they want to know how you treated them. Was it with difference, deference and respect? Was it a con consistent and dependable, right? Are, are, you, are, are, you, uh, are you that crazy boyfriend or crazy girlfriend that goes off bipolar, uh, you know, be, because you're not ready? To, you, you're not a very mature partner yet in a relationship? And nobody wants a long-term relationship. Um, most of us don't want a long-term relationship with someone who's going to whipsaw us through the, re you know, the uh, rest of our days. So do we get serious in the same way, right? Do, do the, the lenders are saying, do they prioritize me? You're saying, do they prioritize me? And here's a couple of examples of what that means. So think of, uh, think of, um, uh, of 
prioritizing me is you ha- you're, they offer you, the lender offers you a chance to do a moratorium on payments. And you didn't because you didn't have to, even though they wouldn't necessarily know whether or not you need it. If, they, if you would have asked, they would have done it because they offered it to you. But did you take advantage of something uh, and, and keep and take from the partnership rather than give to the partnership? Did you prioritize them in that relationship, just like our personal relationships? Am I a priority? Um, do, you want to, uh, do you want to go to that backgammon? I'm, I'm just throwing shit out there, guys. Do you want to go to that backgammon terminate, uh, terminate, tournament instead of going with me to see my family, right? What, and, and navigating and negotiating those, those priorities, right? Are, are you good? To, uh, are you a good partner to current relationships with parents, with children, with, with, uh, with the former spouses, right? Are you good to them afterwards? Because how, how many times have we heard, yeah, I'm dating my next ex, my next ex-boyfriend or my next ex-girlfriend, right? <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it, we begin with the end in mind. Well, are you good to the people that you are no longer working with? Somebody looks at your auto loan and says, how do they treat that previous auto loan? Yes, it's paid. It's no longer active, but how do they treat it? Was it were they good to that lender, right? And, and, and is there drama associated with it? We, we look at Facebook and all of our social media um, uh, for, for places where there's drama in our personal relationships and all those same dramas show up in bankruptcy courts, collection agencies, or in internal collections um, at, a, at a bank. Do we have drama? Do we have, uh, uh, or uh, do we have drama? Or even if we uh, couldn't pay a bill in the past, what would the lender say about you? Were you transparent? Were you cooperative? Were you always updating them on how things were working? There's a, um, there's a, uh, there are codes into our if there's for installment loans it's r1 through r5 uh, r1 through r5 for revolving accounts and installment loans is i1 through i5 do you realize that you could normally you can get an i you can get be marked as an i5 for an installment loan an i5 but the lender has the ability to grade you only as an uh, and the higher the worse they may give you an i1 because you were a delight to work with, even though it was, a, a, it was charged off. They have the ev- a ability to evaluate you as a borrower by using the I or R series, right? An installment loan or revolving an R5 is, is a horrible indicator, but you might be an R1 and still have a 90 day late. See what I'm saying? So, so how do you treat the decline in these relationships? Now, uh, is this is this lender tr- uh, or, or is this borrower trustworthy? Is the lender trustworthy? When things got tough at COVID, did your lender bail or did they lean in and make offers to you? And then the question is, did you use it? when you didn't need to, right? See how our relationships go back and forth. Just like, do you, do you use your, your wife's, um, do you, do you leverage your wife's repute financial reputation and, uh, uh, to make yourself look bigger or better or vice versa, or do you collaborate as a partnership on how to, both of you uh, raise your, your financial reputations, personal reputations together as a team, right? Uh, what, 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 how, do, how are your lenders responding to COVID? How are possible or future lenders responding to COVID? So those are the things that we were, we're the, how do they show up? Because every one of us know Every one of us know that during times of stress is where we really reveal our true colors. Our partners, both banking, personal, family, parents, children, everybody in the universe, how they, when they're under stress, that's how, the, that's the truth of them, at least under stress. So what, so what, so what is 
what is that lenders or what are you, what have been your commitment? What's been your commitment to your lending partners? And by the way, your credit profile is way more extensive than Facebook or social media could Instagram and LinkedIn could ever be far more revealing and you and future lenders, future uh, financially romantic partners are going to check you out. How do you fare with the, uh, with previous partners? So, um, yeah. And the other thing is, is what is your, what, oh, as you're courting, you want what's their long game? What's Chase's long game for me? But I can tell you right now, Chase wants me to have every single one of their credit instruments for the rest of my life. Credit card, credit line, business loan, auto loan, mortgage. They want me to do, uh, it's called, uh, it's, it's, it, they call it wallet share of how much money I spend every month they want the vast major. They want the biggest slice of that wallet share. So, what and what does a meaningful relationship look like to Chase? Just like what is a meaningful? You you guys you guys most of you have done it. You, at some point in your dating relationship where you were actually courting, you're like, this is cool. I'm digging this. This is really working. But before you got engaged, it was like, what do you want out of life? What do you want in, in a, what, what does a meaningful relationship mean to you? Because as I said earlier, you got to match values and you got to match priorities, right? If each of you have different priorities or different values, this isn't going to go very far. But now when you're going from, from, from courting a lender to be engaging with this lender, a credit card is, it's an important, it's, uh, it's an important relationship builder. But I'm not putting a credit card in the engagement process. Engagement means I'm going to give you the most precious thing that I have. And that is my the, the heart and soul of my offer. The, my heart and soul. A credit card is like, yeah, let's go skiing. Let's play around. Let's do our thing. Let's have fun. But a business line of credit is a business loan is way more for lenders. It requires much more commitment. And so once we, that's when we become engaged. Once we have developed a few, it could be a few months, it could be a few years, right? But in, but in our model, we want to, be, we want to go through the courting six months of dating and courting six months of dating and courting before we, uh, before we start the process of saying, Hey, why don't, uh, why don't we take this to the next level? So how do they deepen their relationship? How do lenders deepen their relationship with you? They say, you know what? Here, this is the most precious thing that I own. It's called a business line of credit. It can be abused super easily. And I'm holding it back until I know more about you. And so that's why we, that's why the credit card is such a great way to, to you spend 90 days to six months minimum of showing them your priorities, your values, that you have their back, that you prioritize them, that all of those things that we talked about, right? Everything that we talked about is that you're consistent, that you're dependable, how good is, and that you have amazing other, other amazing relationships. Then they take by offering or you guys negotiating that uh, coming to the place in your relationship where you are raising the bar, right? They're going to see, they increase their lenders, increase their risk significantly by going for a business line or a business loan. And so what is that risk? How have you proven up? What does your, well, what is your profile? What are your borrower behaviors? Now that you've been with them, have you translated those previous borrower profiles that they're aware of from other relationships? Have you translated those over to uh, over to your relationship now with Chase, right? And so that uh, they're they're increasing their risk, and you're increasing your risk. All of a sudden, they give you fifty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollar business loan, and you're like, "Whoa, they're at risk." 
and you're at risk because if you do not handle it well, your entire financial world will fall apart for five to seven or more years. It will completely decimate you. So now, isn't that isn't the best <laughs> the best uh, long term relationships mutually assured destruction? <laughs> you're both at risk. So you both so you're both scared, and you're both. And you're both um, wanting this to, to be the best. You want to take that, that sacred instrument that they're giving you and, and show them, look what I can do. This motivates and inspires me. Everything that you're giving me, I'm just creating a bigger and better world for both of us. And in turn, they're saying, I trust you enough to give it to you. Just please don't disappoint. Please just, uh, I trust you. Go for it. But, but can we do it on these terms? Can we do it? And that's what the underwrite, uh, automatic underwriting criteria is. That's what the automatic limit increase criteria is, is they're, put, they're saying, I'm going to take this back if you don't operate by, so make me feel safe. Please, honey, make me feel safe. And how many of us in our personal relationships have either had that conversation or wanted to have that conversation? Please, honey, make me feel safe. Yes, I believe in you. Yes, I want to take the risk in you, with you. But please make me feel safe. Isn't that what we're doing by following those traffic guidelines and, to, and, and slowly building on that relationship? We deepen the commitment and, and let's, let's just say, so we go from engagement to a committed relationship because they've now given us a business loan or line of credit. But we deepen that relationship by getting the other instrument too. Now we don't have to, of course, outside of this metaphor, but they're all in. That's what a committed relationship means, guys. You cannot have a successful, uh, personally, professionally, you cannot have a, a, a truly committed uh, relationship unless you're all in. And, and so you're, you deepen that relationship. I mean, they even have a, a bellwether uh, uh, dates, right? The 25th anniversary is your silver anniversary. Your, your 50th anniversary is your gold anniversary, right? You're all in. Everything I got is yours. And you say as a borrower to the lender, everything I got, all my priorities, everything, I'm going to protect this relationship with everything I got, with my life. I'm going to protect this relationship because you've believed in me and i I want to make you feel safe because the more you give me, the more we prosper together. Remember, the lender doesn't make a dime unless he, he or she lends to you. Doesn't make a dime without lending. And so, you, but you get to make your partner feel safe. You get to make your partner feel safe. And that's the entire process for building up, upwards of a million dollars in business lines of credit, right? In a good committed re relationship, guys, you don't make assum assumptions. You have open and honest and clear communication. You have, you have the hard conversations. You're, there's transparency. If something's, if something's going wrong in your, in your side of the relationship, you call them up and you say, hey, I, I'm just telling you right now, I, I'm at risk. Something is something's going south for me, and I want to tell you, and I want to work out a way so that we can create a win for us, even if I have to step back a little bit before we move forward, right? Please understand, I need to, in a personal relationship, I'm being called to join the service. I'm being called to, uh, to go away. We need a long-distance relationship, but I want to maintain this relationship, and it's going to be hard on us, but... I want to, I, I, I'm committed to this relationship and you do the things necessary to stay open and transparent in your conversations. The, the biggest, the, the biggest in, in personal and business banking relationships, the biggest treachery, the biggest cause of failure for our relationships is our fear of coming to the other and telling them what's really happening for us. But I know, 
bracketing this part of the conversation from all of the the, the lender uh, seminars and and uh, meetings that I've been attending. Every one of them are the subjects always include numerous ways of how do we how do we what what how do we use that transparency to nurture our relationship further? And that's where the moratoriums are coming from. That's where the, the payment deferments are all coming from, is that they want to preserve the relationship. You guys have heard me say in other times, 2008, it was, it was scorched earth policy. They just wanted every, all the houses back. Everybody was repoing and, and foreclosing on houses. And they, they, they found that that model didn't work because they burned every relationship they ever had. And there was long-term negative effects. Now they want to have that. Now they're nurturing these relationships, but we get to show up and we get to be transparent. We get to be honest and forthright in our conversations with them. We get to, uh, some of you are, 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 that are just new to all of this and you haven't learned the, the strategies for protecting your limits. Many lenders are lowering limits. Uh, uh, exactly how you pay down a, a, a balance, they lower the limit, right? So it ruins your utilization because you're always near 100%. There are ways to, ne to, to negotiate that with lenders. But you got to have that you have to establish a, a, a you have to go through the 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 curiosity stage, the dating stage, the 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 uh, the you've got to nurture this relationship and you've got to give them proof that they can trust you to keep that limit a little higher. These are the things that get make our long term relationships um, prosper. <sighs> Just as a little a sidebar. Um, and the funny thing is, is our banking relationships versus our for versus our personal relationships are polyamorous. That means we can have healthy, powerful, productive relationships with more than one lender. Now it is it's a little more difficult, but we are but there are we can have multiple loves when it comes to building relationships with banks. And we get to take care and nurture every single one of them. We get to make a stand for who we are. We get to display proudly our borrower profile, just like our online dating profiles. Borrower profile, uh, just like our Facebook, our LinkedIn, your professional LinkedIn page. It doesn't have to be a personal relationship. You stand behind who you are and create a borrower profile that looks amazing to a lender, creates interest so that they want to date you, so that they want to invest in you, so that they can test you and see that you are a stand-up gal and a stand-up guy, so that you have the, 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 you have the makings of a powerful and, and profitable and deeply, deeply self-mutually respecting business lending relationship. This is Merrill Chandler, your host of the Get Fundable podcast, and I will see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Get Fundable podcast. Please leave comments because Merrill would love to read about your aha moments from this episode. And be sure to visit GetFundable.com to read our blog, get important links, join our community, and much, much more, like ordering Merrill's tell-all book that is changing the world, The New F Word. And you got to tell your friends about this podcast because we want them to get fundable too.